Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today I'm back here doing the final uh, preparation on our uh, pad that I had uh, Johnny put in behind this new pond. And uh, he kind of got it roughed in with the uh, bulldozer. But the bulldozer was so big that he really couldn't do much as far as uh, leveling it off and getting the right amount of dirt where I needed it. It was pretty, well it was just soft back in here. Uh, you can see how much fill I've got. Uh, got a huge rabbit tat down in there. Some of that will actually be firewood. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be able to pull some of those logs out of there when they get cured good. And we've taken a ton of mushroom logs out of here. And I see some more down in there on that black oak. We can get some right there. There's probably, gosh, I bet there's 20. 20 more uh, shiitake mushroom logs down there we can get off that black oak right there. But uh, what I was going to show you was uh, we actually had a huge tree. This is the root ball on it right there. <laughs> we used this tree as a form all the way across there to that other tree to build up our bank. And that thing's about three foot diameter. It was a kind of a worthless tree as far as lumber grade. It was like three trees all grown together and knotty. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't have got much good lumber out of it, but it made a great uh, form here <laughs> for our dirt, as you can see. There's the end of it where I cut it off. And uh, anyway, we had a big bank over here on this side. We needed dirt. And so what Johnny did is he came in here with a high lift and actually moved that whole bank. I needed dirt over here, three foot of it. Actually, out there on that corner, we're about four feet in there. But he built me up a nice clay bank of, uh, or pad, of clay back here. And this is the water pipe where the water will come out in our tire tank. Right now, I've just got a cap on that, but it'll actually be cut off clear down there. Once we get the tire in, put the sack creed in. And then right here, of course, is our lid for the, uh, I'm not going to pull that off there, but that's an 8-inch culvert. Actually, it's a sewer pipe with an 8-inch PVC lid on it. Keep possums and coons from falling in there, skunks. And so the cattle, we're going to actually bring them down this. We're going to have a skirt area up there coming all the way down this bank. So it's going to be about 80, 100 feet wide up there, probably close to 200 feet. And so the animals will be coming down that bank. We're going to clean that up a little bit, get the little small brush out of it. We're going to leave those trees. And so they'll be coming down here, and I had Johnny make me a little berm right here to divert the water off of our pad. As you can see, well, I've got it covered in hay now, but you get the gist. There it goes, down that valley. So the water that comes off that hillside, I've still got to put a little bit more hay right up there. But it, it hits this little terrace right here and diverts it. So the water won't run out onto my pad. So we're going to have a, a rock pad surrounding the earth moving tire right here. And it's going to be awesome. You know, it has some of the best high quality water. And folks, the, the beautiful thing about the tire tank is it is a winter system. It doesn't freeze all the way through the tire. So we're going to have a three foot tall tire there. And of course a foot and a half of that will be stacked up with rock. And we don't drain them. We leave the water in them all winter long. And so if they freeze on the top, we just cut the ice off and the animals can drink. But this really opens up a huge avenue for this farm. Because we didn't have any winter water system here. So we always graze it early. And when the... The forage was gone, the hay was used up, we were done. We, we didn't have water. We had to chop ice in a pond. And the landowner wasn't real happy about us, you know, getting access to the pond with the animals because it's a preserved pond kind of for fishing. So this is going to have fishing in it too. We're going to stock it. But, uh, yeah, still got to spread that hay out. But uh, it's, it's an awesome feeling to have this big of an area for your pad i'll tell you why when you have a bunch of animals like you know we got a pretty good sized herd it wouldn't be a big issue on a smaller herd but on a big herd when they come down that bank if you don't have some area here for them to spread out 
and let that pressure go this way. That'll be a, there's going to be a fence over there, just a single hot wire fence. Uh, I'll back that up. It's two wires. We have a sheep wire at 12 inches, and the cattle wire is at 32. So we'll be using some of those good inch and a quarter fiberglass rods that we've got. I just got a bunch of those cut, and uh, they're starting to sell. A few people are starting to come and get them. But the beautiful thing about a six-foot uh, fiberglass rod is you can put one right up there at that tree on that corner. You can put one right over there on that clay bank at that corner. When you come up the hill, you can put another one up there. So those fiberglass corners, when you drive them in the ground three foot deep, they're holding the tension on a two-wire fence. Now, on a six-foot fiberglass post that's an inch and a quarter solid fiberglass, you can pull th uh, three wires with it. I wouldn't want to pull four or five. Uh, you need an H-brace to do that. But on just a two- to three-wire fence, when you drive that thing in the ground three feet, you have got a very, very strong corner that can take a lot of tension. It's not like a one-inch post. These inch and a quarter posts are beefy, beefy posts. So I'm looking forward to being able to use those to get this new apron around our water tank fence then. And you know what? Uh, we seeded this really well, and uh, with the hay, it's going to have seed on it. We're going to get some grazing out of this. And we graze our pond dams as long as it's not wet. Now, if we come in here and we've had a two-inch rain, there's going to be a polywire starting up there at that corner coming down to that tank and around that dam. You don't want to put animals on a grade, a bunch of them, during a rainstorm. They will work that dam over. And you just paid, you know, a chunk of money to put it in. You don't want animals uh, removing the dam. <laughs> you know, you get a, a bunch of them on there, they can do that. But we're really, I'm, I guess I'm surprised how much the fescue's growing. Uh, this, we just finished another pond next to this one. And the boys got it seeded and strawed last night. That makes our seventh pond that we've dug uh, this summer fall i guess it's actually late summer <clears throat> late fall we've had him here but isaac and isaac and ben uh, actually did the stand pipe on the other one and uh, that one actually caught a little water in it already we're supposed to get around two inches in the next two to three days and all week is calling for rain so let the filling process begin that's why i'm over here i wanted to get this hay on here before we get that two inches of rain is Isaac, uh, he seeded this with a broadcast seeder on a four-wheeler. And if you don't get hay on there, guess where your seeding goes? It ends up down in that woods. But you talk about a beautiful pond for wildlife. <laughs> this is a great story. So it's not, it's a true story. I was coming up here to watch Johnny, or to see how he's getting along on this pad. This was on two days ago. We're in the middle of deer season. And, uh, of course, I'd taken my gun out of my truck because I wasn't hunting that day. And uh, I <laughs> come up this road right here. There's a gravel road right out there. And I see something standing by the fence on the other side of the road over there. And that's ours, too. That's the lifetime lease owners. And uh, <laughs> there's an eight-point buck standing over there in those cedars watching Johnny working on this dam. And I backed up in my truck. Of course, just wanted to look at him with the binoculars. Uh, once he took off, which I thought he would, he didn't. So I just took my cell phone out and I took a picture of him. And he walked up that fence line. He never ran. I got a beautiful shot of him walking away in the in the sunset over there, his rack sticking up over his head. And he was, a, I would say, a two-year-old eight-pointer. So he's going to be a beautiful deer next year. And I'm kind of tickled that he made it. You know, he's, well, his season is, is not over yet, but you know, he's made it this far. He's probably probably be around next year, but... It's just amazing. He didn't run off, he, and he didn't look at me. When I backed up next to him, he was looking at Johnny the whole time. He never looked at me one time. It was like I was invisible to him, which is just amazing. But that's the way deer hunting go. <laughs> but I did see a monster. I didn't get him. He, uh, I think there was one bigger than him in there that ran him out of these does and he come lunging up out of there and he stopped right behind a great big tree and I never, never did get a, a good uh, angle on him. So he, he's out here too. So he's going to be a whomper next year. 
we've got some really nice deer hunting in here and it's compliments of the cattle and the clover all the different forbs all the different sprouts some of the civil pasture work that we're doing and, and these water points you know you get in a drought and you got good clean water around your farm you don't think just the, the cattle are using that the wildlife are using it too so i i love that i love to see deer tracks and, and turkey coon possum skunk coyote i don't care i like them all i like them all to be on the farm because the more species you can have on your farm the stronger it is so with that uh we got rain coming i've got about uh looks like two hours and uh i've got to get this last little bit done here i'm going to be done ready for the rain so everyone have a great day uh you know uh, this is kind of challenging times right now here with the uh covid thing everyone stay safe uh it's going to get better and uh, we'll make it through this and just remember do something good do something good one thing each day and you know pretty soon you'll get to your goals so write down what you want to do and do one positive thing each day to reach that goal and i just got a video from a young fellow this morning uh, he came out and worked with us a couple weeks ago and he sent me a, a real short clip of his farm net that he's working on and he's got his work cut out for him but he was out there cutting brush and cleaning the place up and getting ready to build some new fence and he was fired up and happy and i was tickled to see that so yeah that's awesome Anyway, I'm going to sign off here. Everyone new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you would. And that like on the way out, I'd appreciate it. And we're going to see you all down the road.